place where it all begins. That's what I always say because really it is um, here to symbolize and remind us of the Freedom Charter which was signed on the 26th of June in 1955 here on the actual square. And um, the architects who put this whole project together and, and designed this place interpreted um, the past and really sort of us going beyond 1994 into a new South Africa. So you find symbolism in the actual building. For example, if you looked on the square, you'd see nine X's. But the nine X's symbolize the nine provinces of South Africa and also symbolize our democratic right to vote with an X. The building behind me is called the um, Heritage Monument. And within that is housed and, and kept the 10 charters of the Freedom Charter. Why have a hotel this beautiful, this comfortable, in the most impoverished area of Soweto? Well, when my company uh, and my business partners and I looked at the opportunity to put a hotel here, we did a lot of research and basically what we came to understand was that there were no hotels of this caliber or statue. There is no hotel and we would be introducing the first four-star hotel in Soweto. And uh, to be sort of like the first to do that and address the market needs of Sowetans who enjoy this type of facility but probably have to drive into Santon or drive into Rosebank was just exactly what we were satisfied with. Now you talk about the community and the pride they feel in this hotel, but besides the name change, what have you done to actively involve them in the success that is this hotel in this area? Clip Town is probably one of the most impoverished parts of the Greater Soweto. Clip Town is actually older than the rest of Soweto. It, you know, spans a period of over 107 years. So when we came in, we recognized the fact that we would need to engage the community. We created opportunities for training um, and took on a lot of young people who were unemployed, probably with not a lot of hope and a lot of chance for further studies and used the unconventional way of creating you know, a, a skills base and really by transferring hotel and hospitality skills. My night was absolute bliss. I don't recall much besides you know, a bit of softness and quiet. It was really beautiful. And just waking up and looking over Freedom Square in the morning, like I sort of stumbled out of my pajamas and I saw people going to work, you know, fruit sellers selling their wares. It was just beautiful to wake up just in the middle of Soweto and, you know, such comfort. I loved it. As usual, I'm trying a little bit of everything. So over here we have some chicken livers, not a lot. I'm trying to be brave. And here this is quite interesting. It's, it's called sour porridge. And um, the traditional process is very cool. You know, they ferment um, sorghum and maize together to get a sort of sour liquid which they make porridge with. And of course, my pepper and mince, which is a traditional South African meal that I absolutely love and can't wait to tap into. So then do we, you guys do English breakfast just as well as you do amazing African breakfast. That's exactly what we do. We want to make sure that we take care of everyone's uh, desire and you know, address everyone's palate. So if you're courageous and if adventurous or feeling like you want to be reminded of your upbringing, we do our t typical township breakfast. But you know, we also have no trouble in presenting an English breakfast. Yeah. I think that this is a beautiful place to stay in, to experience this community to the full. And you know, this is a four-star hotel, really lush, beautiful accommodation. The kind of place you wouldn't expect to find in Soweto, but yet it's just so poignant that this has been able to thrive here and that there's a new kind of wave of business people doing amazing things around this community that has traditionally been neglected when it comes to economic empowerment. So I'd really recommend coming to stay here, not just to experience a community, but to experience some really luxurious hotel staying.